Welcome along guys, well today we're at Destination Triumph in Washington We're riding something a little bit special I don't mean the boring old H2 I mean the amazing Triumph Daytona Moto2 bike This is a bike, I love the look of it, I love when they announced it We're going to get a chance to have a spin, can't wait So we're going to go back to Simon's house in a minute once we've done this little loop we're going to do when I get on the, the 765. That little lightweight Daytona makes short work of the little twisties. This handle's fine, but you do have to muscle it around a little bit. There's a tighty by the look of it, he's saying around here. Yeah, he ain't joking, is he? I'm having to counter steer it. Wow, what a fantastic set of bends. Love it. <laughs> oh, it's good to be out. It is good to be out. It's now my turn to ride this beauty. Oh, after seeing it go, following Simon. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this, I tell you. If you don't know anything about these, these are a limited edition. There's only, I think, how many is there? There's 765 made for Europe. There's 765 made for the States and Asia. Uh, for the UK, there's only 120 bikes. This is number 449 out of the 765 allocated, I guess, for Europe. It's the same as the 675 from a, a chassis perspective it's got the top of the range olins on it the latest ttx rear shock which is a better spec than what the the r version had it's got the full carbon fiber but all the all the body works carbon fiber front to back the whole thing's carbon fiber uh the engine is worked on by the moto 2 guys let's wait until we're rolling and we we'll carry on there it's not much fun sat in the driveway <laughs> telling you all about it no one mentioned anything about going off road so first of all i'll say a massive thanks to destination triumph for sorting out this ride simon is one of their customers they put me in touch with him and they've sorted out the insurance for me to ride this bike because that's the problem with riding people's own bikes if the worst were to happen where would you be with insurance so it's a massive thanks to destination triumph for sorting that so the position on it it's amazingly comfortable this is one thing I've found, not, I've ridden the 675R before and I found it a really comfortable sports bike, an incredibly accomplished sports bike. This feels exactly the same, the geometry, oh, a bit of grit in the road, the geometry is the same as the 675, but just with slightly updated suspension over the, whoa, torque, the brakes are also incredible. It's the same brakes really as on the new Street Triple RS, but it's got the Stylema calipers as well. Does it have the Stylemas? No, that has the M50s. This has got the Stylemas. And the feel from it is beautiful. It's got that same fully adjustable RCS master cylinder. The brake feel is fantastic. So much better than my H2. Triumph reckon, because the frame isn't painted, this has got a lovely aluminium anodised finish to the frame, and because it isn't painted, Triumph say that it saves one and a half kilos in paint. One and a half kilos in paint saving. That is just incredible. Yes, it's so agile. Loads of grip as well. Super coursers on it. Pirelli super coursers and yeah, it feels lovely. This is this is beautiful. Yeah, that front end on this is just gorgeous. That front end is so stable. The 675R was fantastic. What a track bike, what a road bike. This is just taking it. This is the ultimate Daytona, is what Triumph call this. The ultimate Daytona. And so far, I've got no reason to disagree with them. So specs of this, this is 128 horsepower, 
80 Newton metres of torque. The new Street Triple RS, which they say has got some Moto2 influences on the engine, that is 121 brake horsepower. So this is about another 7 brake horsepower. This also makes the same torque. So what Triumph have done with the engine, they've increased the compression. The red line is 600 RPMs higher than the Street Triple RS. They've made a harder, hardened materials for the pistons, the conrods. They've got the diamond-like coating, the DLC coating on the gudgeon pins. They've got titanium valves in the exhaust. So basically, it's a very similar spec to the Moto2 bikes. The Moto2 bikes are actually 10 brake horsepower more than this, but this is designed to do 6,000 mile service intervals. The full Moto2 engines obviously changed and, and refreshed after every couple of rounds. So completely different requirements. This engine is actually str much stronger than the race Moto2 engines. This is a little bit lighter. It's a couple of kilos lighter than the Street RS. Whoa! God, I like the wheelie really, the first couple of gears. This also has a custom arrow pipe, so a low slung arrow pipe to look like the Moto2 exhaust systems. It's pretty quiet actually. I mean, it's got to meet all Euro 4. I think this is Euro 4, not Euro 5 this. But it's got to meet those legislations to quieten it down. And of course, if you want to get this bike on track, which is what it's really made for, you're not going to do it with a great big noisy exhaust. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a bit more volume out of it. I don't know if the baffles can be taken out, but you've got more volume actually from the delicious induction roll. Quick shift and blipper is amazing. <laughs> oh, the front brake is just so nice. Nothing gives you more confidence in a road bike or any bike. It's knowing the front brake is incredible. That gives you so much confidence to push on. It's got so much torque coming out the corners. This bike is like, I think it's 10% up on the old model torque value across the whole rev range. Oh, the suspension is also lovely. All those bumps, it just flattens that out. Even though I'm 6'2", at no point do I feel too big for this bike. It's really comfortable. It's not too much of an extreme position. It's a very nice ride. I, I could sit on this all day. The foot pegs aren't even that high. Why don't try and bring back the Daytona to a proper production run? This is incredible. Oh, I love this. It's brilliant. Lovely, yeah. Lovely. Oh, so much. So much grip. So accomplished around the bend. Suspension so good. So if you do want to get your hands on one of these, and if you can still find one, because I believe these are all sold out according to the Triumph website, but these are 15,700, which is a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money, but this thing is so special. Fully limited edition, all carbon fiber. Yeah, I know a lot of people would have liked to have seen a the proper Moto2 bodywork on but then it wouldn't really have been a Daytona the thing with this it's, it is the ultimate Daytona it looks like a Daytona it rides like a Daytona but just the best ever suspension is amazing the feel of the bike the chassis you know all of those things make it gorgeous to ride on track, oh, th this would be phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. On the road, you don't need more power than this. Look at the hole in the road there. Jesus. Way! The wheelie control even lets you have a little bit of fun. It's not too restrictive, which is nice. The most impressive thing for me, I think, is, is the torque. Yeah, I guess it's nearly 800 cc. It's, it's, not, it's not a little 600. You know, it's pushing the capacity a little bit now. But 
it's still got so much power. I think that's the, that's the triple. That's what triples do. You get the torque almost of a V-twin and the top end smash of a straight four. So the triple engine, I think, is a fantastic configuration. It really is the best of both worlds. All right, we will in a minute if we can slow slide them down. <laughs> Stop for a bit of a walk around. Let's show you some of the details of this machine. There she is, the gorgeous 765 Daytona Moto2. The carbon bodywork is the first thing that obviously stands out. It's uh, beautifully finished, hand laid. And then it's got the, you know, the, that, that Moto2 Union Jack in, in the graphite and the gray colors with the Triumph logo. It looks stunning. It's the same with the tail. It's a single seat bike, so you can't take a pillion on this. And it's got the, the Moto2, the official Moto2 Dorna certified logos. The bespoke arrow, I think this is a arrow special part. I don't think this is a standard item. I think that is specifically produced for this machine. So it is a little bit windy here, so you have to excuse the wind noise, but a massive opening here. Not, can't quite get, oh, I can get the fist in. It can be properly fisted. Brembo Stylemas, this is probably one of the first bikes to actually have these fitted. Well, they're getting sort of commonplace now, but they are incredibly good brakes. Not only is the master cylinder adjustable for span, but it's also adjustable for fluid capacity, so you can tune that braking exactly how you like it. The engine, the heart of the beast. This is that Moto2 engineered breathed on lump. 128 brake horsepower, 80 Newton meters of torque. Lovely, lovely other little details is the TTX Olin's rear shark. The frame is bared, anodized. Normally these are black. And as I mentioned, Triumph reckon that saves one and a half kilos for not having any paint on it. The important details with a special edition, your numbers, 449 or 765. Lovely top yoke, lovely. Did I read somewhere that the clocks actually adjust? The oh, angle of, of them? Angle. Yeah, because they're, they're sort of quite down set, aren't they? It's fairly firmly bolted to that frame. Is it? It's no, it doesn't seem like any adjustment. Though, okay. But these are the uh, these are last years. They're better. I don't like the new oh, ones. I'm glad they are too. These are much like nicer. Display, I hate. I don't nice, like it at all. No, this, no, this is, is really nice. nice. Yeah. You got, you got this is much. You can really see the rev counter. The new yeah. RS display. It's all. Up the side, it's, all yeah. it's all just over stylized. I criticised that on the new Tiger yeah. actually. But there she is. It is a beautiful machine. Simon, you happy oh, with uh, it? The original Daytona when they first came out in 2007. Did you? They were all right. Was delightful, exquisite thing. Yeah. Tractate a bit. Um, that was actually quite a single purpose riding position. Right. Enough, if, to help people under, I'd say it's the exact opposite of a Jixxer 600. Okay. It has an all day long engine with torque everywhere, but a very serious riding right. position. Whereas okay. a Jixxer, you, see, you, know, you could ride all day on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but with a very whizzy engine. But the beauty of any triple really, is that you know that sweet spot that all riders experience when it's just right for their bike and the power comes in it's like that yeah it's like that all across <laughs> the rev range and if you haven't ridden a triple you're missing out <laughs> as you can tell he's passionate he's yeah, passionate about much, the bike yeah. so there we go guys a quick frantic look at the incredible 765 daytona moto 2 replica is it a replica or was it just a moto 2 the only motorcycle endorsed and licensed by Dorna. This is the real deal. <laughs> but thanks for watching. I've, I've a massive thanks to Destination Triumph. Massive thanks to Simon for letting me loose on his baby. Somehow I get the feeling that I haven't worked this nowhere near as hard. <laughs> That's how Simon does when he rides it. But massive thanks. Take care guys, ride safe, keep safe, and I'll speak to you all soon. See you later. Jesus Christ, potholes! Oh yeah, oh well spotted. That might have been just as I've been hitting on that as well. Poor old Insta360 is getting more grief. Oh, <laughs> Look at that! I think it's still running. Look at that! It's a bloody champ this thing, isn't it? Well, that actually the footage come out of it was working. That's like worn through part of the actual board and that, isn't it? See if it'll stop saving. Seems to have worked. <laughs>